That's really uh, quite striking how quickly so many companies which often you know pretend that they want the state to stay away in bad times they then ask for the state to come in and of course the state should come in and help companies of all sizes but how to really make sure that we bring conditionality not in a punitive way but in a way that really also lays the path for the kind of economy that we want to have uh, in the next 10 years, both because we need to have a recovery now, but even without the COVID crisis, so more inclusive and more sustainable economy, there's really interesting lessons, I think, coming uh, from around the world. And my recommendation to governments is you have for once, the upper hand, use it. You have the upper hand to write contracts in such a way that there's some sort of guarantee that we get a change in the system. I think the way that Denmark is approaching it is very interesting, which is both a combination, if you want, of UBI, so just guaranteeing an immediate injection to all households so they can eat, but also making sure that the contracts of workers uh, remain in place so people are actually being paid to stay home they don't lose their contracts. So once the recovery can begin, they can immediately go to work with contracts in place. Wouldn't it be great if at least one of the consequences after this crisis, which will hopefully uh, be over at some point, we don't just go back to the old way to think that at best the state is there to fix market failures, which by definition means you have to wait for the margin to mess up before you even intervene. So this need for an active co-shaping and co-creation of the market itself, as opposed to just fixing, is hopefully one of the way also that economists will better understand the role of policy.